Today we will talk about the principles skills required for the examination of the accordion. Really, prior to that, as always in medicine, when we want to examine the accordion or any part of the body, we have to take a permission from the patient for uh, such uh, an examination, as I'll uh, show it now. Examination of the procordium really let's first know what is meant by the procordium. Procordium refers to the anterior part of the chest that overlies the heart. So if the order of examination is to examine the procordium, this really does mean examination of the heart. Examination of the heart is a systemic examination like other like the abdomen, like the respiratory system, consists of inspection, palpation, auscultation, uh, and uh, rarely percussion is performed for the precordium. As we will see now, first of all we have to elevate the head of the bed for 45 degrees, and we will perform these three steps, as I said, the inspection, palpation, and the auscultation. First of all, I will stand at the end of the bed, and looking at the chest to see first of all whether it is a normal or a normal shape or not. Really what is meant by normal shape of the chest? Normal shape of the chest just like this chest is a normal normal in shape. Uh, normal shape means that the chest is symmetrical in shape. This is one. Second elliptical in a cross section and the transverse diameter more than the anterior posterior diameter at a ratio of 7 to 5 cm that's to say each 7 cm in the transverse diameter correspond to 5 cm from the AP diameter in addition to that there will there must be no any deviation or bending either laterally or forward there must be no if all these parameters being present in a chest we can call this chest uh, or we can label it as a normal shape of the chest what is the abnormality involving the shape of the chest one of them may have uh, scoliosis that's to say we have a lateral bending second one is the kyphosis that's to say forward bending these two abnormalities are important because both of them may alter the position of the cardiac impulse. Second, may result in heart failure. Okay, other abnormal shape may include sternal depression. That's to say, there is a depression here at the lower end of the sternum. Also, this results in deviation of the cardiac impulse, or what we call it, pictus carinatum or vision chest. That that's to say, there is a prominence here involving the sternum and the costal cartilage here also this will result in displacement of the cardiac impulse the last one is what we call it the barrel chest that's to say the anterior posterior diameter is more than the transverse diameter or even equal to uh, the transverse diameter it's considered as uh, abnormal this is really regarding the shape of the chest so I had seen it from the end of the bed and now across the chest of the patient to see the anterior posterior diameter. This, this is just one point in the inspection. The second point I have to look whether the patient had a scar. Really not any scar, but a scar that is peculiar to the cardiovascular system. This scar may include first of all median sternotomy scar. Here, just here. It extends from the upper up to the lower part of the sternum. This is really used in open heart surgery for blood placement, whether mitral or aortic. It also uh, can be used in cabbage surgery. Okay, here. And uh, an important point I would like to uh, just tell you about it is uh, in, in male patient, really there, there, there may be heavy or presence of forest of hair on the chest. So we have to displace the hair laterally and to see whether there is a scar underlying it or not. This is the first one. 
Second scar we have to look at is the lateral thoracotomy scar or left submammary scar extending from here down up to the back of the patient that really this scar is the result of an operation uh, that is used for a closed mitral uh, vulvotomy. Also an important point here is in female now uh, sometimes the pendulous breast overlie it so you have to displace the breast slightly upward and laterally to look for this scar specifically. Uh, last scar which is also important to look uh, for in the examination of the chest is infraclavicular scar either here or either here left or right. This scar really is the result of an operation for pacemaker or cardioverter defibrillator uh, boxes either here or either here. Okay. This is just about the inspection for the chest. Other abnormal other points important in the inspection of the chest is the presence of visible pulsation. This is the third point. What is important to look uh, at in the chest for visible pulsation? Really, you have to look at the following points. First of all, you have to look here, just at the mitral area. If there is any visible pulsation, sometimes the cardiac impulse is visible. Okay, due to, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or in patient with hypertension. Second one is to look at, as at the left, parasternal edge here for RVH. Right ventricular hypertrophy will result in visible pulsation here. Third pulsation we have to look at is here at the pulmonary area, if there is pulmonary hypertension. Other is suprasternal notch pulsation here may indicate the aortic arch aneurysm. Other pulsation is carotid either here or here. If there is huge and enormous pulsation here, what we call it carotid shudder or corrigan sign that that occur in patients with hyperdynamic circulation, especially in patients with aortic regurgitation. In addition, you have to look for the jugular veins, whether they are distended or not. Other visible pulsation you have to look at is the upper right parasternal area here for ascending aortic aneurysm. And lastly, you have to look at the epigastrium when we ask the patient to hold his breath, just like me when I ask the patient now. Okay, if we see here, just focus on this area. Okay, we can see. Okay, we can see. We can see now visible pulsation here. This is may normally occur in uh, thin individual and in normal persons, but abnormally may occur in aortic, abdominal aortic aneurysm or in patients with tricuspid regurgitation due to pulsatile liver and sometimes in patients with the right ventricular hypertrophy. This is all about the uh, inspection. The next step of the precordium examination is the palpation. Palpation, the patient also in 45 degree, the head of the bed being elevated. And we have to look at the following points. First of all, I have to know where is the cardiac impulse is. That's to say the localization of the cardiac impulse. Second one, I have to uh, characterize the cardiac impulse. What is the character of the cardiac impulse? And the third one, I have to look for throat, lifts, that's to say heat, and for palpable heart sound. Now we will demonstrate all this. Uh, points in uh, this uh, in this scene. Okay, I have first of all to localize the apex bead. How I can localize the apex bead? I'll screen a wide area. Okay, I put my hand over the nipple and slightly lower, and then extending it up to the axillary area with my palmar surface of my hands. Looking for what? Really looking for 
cardiac impulse or apex speed. What is apex speed? Apex speed is the palpable, gentle, brief impulse that is lateral most, lower most that can slightly lift the finger over lies it. This is the definition of the apex speed. So I have to localize it well. Okay. I can now detect the apex speed now here. But let's suppose that I failed in the detection. Normally, 50% of the individuals, they have an palpable apex speed, which is normally. So what is the next step I have to perform? The next step is to turn the patient to the left side. Stick there. Don't put the match on my Okay, by this maneuver we can really detect the apex speed. Okay. I ask the patient to turn himself into the uh, lateral position because the cardiac apex became more close, more proximal to the anterior chest. Okay, if I had detected the apex speed here, I have to give a character for it. That's to say, I, I have to characterize the apex speed by <coughs> the tips of my finger. And I have to give a character for it. Then, when I localize it, I keep it in my mind, this position. Then I'll count the apex speed and decide whether it is displaced or not. This is the sternal angle, slightly below it. This is the suprasternal node, sorry. Slightly below it is the, this is the sternal angle, correspond to the second rib. This is second intercostal space, third, fourth, and this is the fifth. Fifth intercostal space. This is whether or not the apex speed or cardiac impulse is displaced downward or not. Then I have to look by an imaginary line for the clavicle. An imaginary line that bisect the clavicle, what we call it, what we call it the left, the left interclavicular line, and to look for whether by which we can decide whether the apex beat is at the this line, beyond it, lateral to it, that's to say displaced laterally or medially. The normal apex speed, the normal cardiac impulse is normally at the or slightly medial to the left interclavicular line, okay? At the fifth intercostal space also we have discovered now that it is at the fourth, at the fifth intercostal space, okay? This is the cardiac impulse. I had detected and give her, give it a a character for abnormal character may take the form of tapping apex speed that occur in MS. Other abnormality that may uh, characterize the apex speed or maybe a feature for apex speed is the pressure loaded, what we call it heaving apex speeds. That's to say forceful, sustained, but undisplaced apex speed, which is a character of pressure overload in case of hypertension or aortic stenosis. Other character for the apex speed is the volume loaded apex speed which occur in volume overload in case of aortic regurgitation and in mitral regurgitation this uh, character or this feature differs from the uh, pressure loaded apex speed in that it is displaced unlike the case of a pressure loaded that's to say pressure loaded apex speed is not displaced while volume loaded is displaced other character is the double epic speed when we have double impulse here this is a feature of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy the last feature for uh, cardiac impulse is what we call it uh, dyskinetic cardiac impulse which occur in uh, for example in heart failure okay uh, after that i have to look for the thrill heave or lifts and for palpable heart sound. As I said, palpable heart sound should not be normally palpable. Any, any, any palpable sound is abnormal. How I can do that really in the filament maneuver? First of all, 
I will put my finger here looking for the palpable first heart sound or palpable third heart sound or palpable fourth heart sound then I'll put I'll use this part of my hand which is the metacarpal heads also over this area in such a manner this is to detect the throat really here we can feel the throat diastolic throat of my throat stenosis and then I look for lift in such a maneuver I will use the base of my palm in such a maneuver and 90 degree my elbow is flexed to 90 degree and I look at my elbow junction at my elbow joint okay if there is really if there is a lift I'll see my hand like this this indicates a lift the lift here or the heave here here we call it the apical heave which uh, typified uh, LVH then I'll go to the left parasternal area here I'll put also I, this part looking for the throw then I'll look for heave then I'll put also this part to look for the throw for VSD this area we call it herbs area then I'll put my finger again to look for palpable P2 and looking for a throw there is no other heave just these two uh, sides and then at the aortic area I look for systolic throw of aortic stenosis okay after that I have to look for a throw of mitral stenosis in such a manner I'll put it over the mitral area stick that in that then I'll ask the patient to turn himself okay then I'll ask the patient to sit I'll put also my the palmar this part of the, my palmar surface over the pulmonary area and over the aortic area and asking the patient to exhale breathing Hamada, take a nafas with the palm, pull it from the side and then take a nafas, and see what's going on and see what's going on okay, this is really about the palpation Really, the palpation follows what we call the Z uh, cycle or Z groove, starting from the mitral area. This is the mitral area, and then for the tricuspid area or left parasternal area, and then into herbs area for VSD, and then into pulmonary area, and then into the aortic area. This is about the palpation. What is meant by throat? What is meant by hip? What is meant by palpable sound? Palpable sound, really, the sound, as I said, uh, should, should not be normally palpable. When it's palpable, it indicates underlying pathology. For example, palpable S1 occur in mitral stenosis. Palpable P2 occur in patient with pulmonary hypertension. Palpable S3 may occur in patient with constrictive pericarditis. And palpable S4 may occur in patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Third heart sound fourth heart sound left ventricular and first heart sound are best to be detected at the mitral area while second heart sound pulmonary component is better to be detected at the pulmonary area what is meant by heave and what is meant by thrill a thrill is, is a superficial sensation of uh, vibration it uh, looks like a vibrating telephone mobile telephone uh, just like just like this sensation will give you uh, this indicates that there is underlying murmur and also it could be systolic throat and diastolic throat. Here or left is a palpable, is a palpable uh, impulse that, that is noticeably 
uh, elevate or lift the hand. And for this reason, we use this maneuver to detect it. This one, the apical heave. And here is the left parasternal heave. This indicates RVH and this indicates RVH. Okay, this is about the palpation. The last step in the brocardial examination is the auscultation of the patient. Really, prior to performing an auscultation, 